Um, so we really started with this you know, free plan, $20 a month plan, and really quickly this is what happened. Customers would contact us, and we had a enterprise advisory council contact us. That was, it was free, pro for $20 a month, or enterprise advisory council contact us. That's what our website pricing page looked like um, back in 2010. And so people would sign up for the free and $20 a month plan, and then also we had these customers writing into the enterprise advisory council saying, I love your service, I use it on my personal blog, I want to bring it to, you. I want to, bring it to my office, but I have to pay you more than $20 a month or otherwise I will get fired. <laughs> Right, like it just, I, like I cannot in good faith go to my boss and say, hey, we're gonna pay this company $240 to run all of our performance and security and reliability infrastructure, which is a great problem to have. So it took us two years, two years, and, like I, and, I, and trust me, I wish it had been faster, to come out with what we called a business plan, which was $200 a month, so 10 times above what we were charging, um, and, and kind of an enterprise plan, which was basically originally $3,000 a month, and now it's up to $5,000 a month, Ten, like a magnitude order. So it took us two years to get there. And so I think the, like the, the lesson I learned is to be um, impa patiently impatient. Like we always wanted to get there faster, but we weren't quite ready, because the types, what your organization needs to do to service those larger customers are totally different than what we had to do for our free and $20 a month um, customers. Like if we made a mistake and someone was on the free plan, we were, they were very forgiving. If somebody was paying us you know, $3,000, $5,000, one, it, our customers who were paying us $60,000 a year, they are not as forgiving, nor should they be, because yeah. they're a real business and it's mission, mission critical and it's totally un, un, uh, unacceptable. And so we went through this whole transformation and then this happened. So we, we got into these, these larger account types and you know, we, we have a sales team now fielding them, which is great because with, with our free plan, our $20 a month plan, we have no sales team, but to, again, to close a $60,000 deal, like they want to talk to somebody. <laughs> they want someone to like ask technical questions to you. You can't just point them to your documentation. Like they want to talk to somebody. Um, and then once they sign up, you need to service them. Um, and so we, we build that all out. Um, and I remember this is what happened. So we were really, we, we started to get like better at these $60,000, $100,000 contracts. And then, and then like, and it's like this Oracle walks through the door where we had a customer, brand name customer, amazing internet property who were like, look, it was a $1 million contract. And our sales team was like all over this, co this contact. They, you know, won and dined them and they were so excited and they were promising them the world. And what I was remember, their quota at the time? Do you remember? Pardon me. What was their their quota at the time? Oh, I don't, oh you don't, I don't remember? remember. Okay, I don't but remember. it was like a it was a big yeah, deal. Yeah. It was a big deal again. Like that's just a lot. That that, yeah. that was a big. It would have totally made our year, our revenue number for the year. Like it, it was a big deal. And I remember Matthew and I literally having a panic attack, like a heart attack, and we said, "We are not going to take on this customer. We can. We are not ready." And it was this. It was this. It was this. Uh, uh, friction where the sales team was saying, oh my God, they're brand name, they want to pay us a million dollars, of course we need to get there. We have to change, drop all our priorities and focus on winning this contract. And, and I remember thinking, no, no we don't, no we can't. We weren't ready yet. Um, and so what ended up happening, and it was not obvious, but what ended up happening, and this is really hard to do, is we, we told the customer, look, we admire what you guys are doing, we would love to be your vendor of choice, but truthfully, we're not ready to, to do this yet. But we'd love to keep in touch. And the next time this contract comes up for renewal, we want to bite at the apple then. And fast forward 18 months later, we won the contract. Amazing. But it was that, like it was, and I, I tell you, our, the, the, per, the salesperson was not happy. Yeah. Our head of sales, not happy. Because yeah. <laughs> they wanted to use it as, an, as a reason to get better as a company, yeah. and I totally get that. I totally get it. You, you, you lean in a little bit and that company makes you better because they have higher expectations and that's great and it's, it's hard but it's, 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 a, it's a good hard. But like there's also a thing about um, whiplash in the organization and, and I think like as a founder or executive if you're running a company, your job is to figure out is this good for the company or is it going to be whiplash? And we just thought at the time it was whiplash. Now of course there's no you can't live life in parallel, so I don't know what would have happened, but I really, I still, I, I, I'm sure to this day we made the right choice. Yeah, I really want to dig in here on some words you said, because I think probably a lot, like by the laughter, a lot of people can relate to this problem. So you have this, this big customer, like how did, what were the tangible things that made you know you're not, 
you know, you're not ready, right? Because as a founder, you're always doing things that you're not ready to do, right? Um, and so how did you know, like, no, honestly, we're not ready? Like, how do you evaluate whiplash would be another way to ask the question, but I think, like, that's one piece, and then we have to talk about the sales. When the words were uttered, we need to drop everything and change our product roadmap to meet these customers' demand, I was like, no, we don't. No, no, we don't. We're not going to do that. Um, because we have all these other customers. I mean, today we have 7 million internet properties. Back in the day, I don't know, it was probably a million. But it's like we have a million other customers we have to care about, too. And this revenue is super shiny, and it's very attractive. And yes, I agree, we will get there. But it doesn't have to be right now. And, and again, I think that that's the, I, I real, it would have break it, broken the organization. Um, it would have just changed a lot of different sorts of things. And, uh, and, and I, I really don't think the customer would have been happy in the end because we were going through you know, scaling, scaling growing pains, which, which is what every company does. And we didn't want them to have to bear the brunt of those. Well, and, and, and how did you deal with the sales team? Well, look, I, I mean, one thing I've learned, which I also did not know when I started Cloudflare, is no is a really powerful wor word. You just got to say no sometimes. And the answer was like, no. Understand we want this. Go back, tell them we want to stay in touch, and we'll, 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 go, we'll, we'll try, we'll, you know, let's be a good partner here. Now, I work with great people, and so they understood that. They were disappointed, as they should be. That's their job. They should be disappointed. But, but, but you know, we, we, you, win, you play as a team, you win as a team. Interesting. And that customer came to you, right? Yes.